back to Definite Definitive. I'm Ken. And I'm Bethany. It's a wonder we get anything done. <laughs> and together as a married couple, we're re-watching, reviewing, and scoring all the DC movies in the DC Extended Universe. Also known as the DCEU. We just watched and scored Batman v Superman Dawn of Justice. Mm -hmm. How much do we like our two leads, which are Batman and Superman? In case you couldn't tell by the title. You know, it seemed like the whole goal of Batman was just to get him with his shirt off, and don't get me wrong, I appreciate Ben Affleck's workout, but that was not enough <laughs> to make him very interesting to me. For Superman, he was kind of mopey and like whiny and like, oh, so tough. I can do all these wonderful things, but not everyone appreciates me all the time. I don't know if I can be me. He is an alien who's dealing with quite a lot of baggage trying to deal with our government in this country and, and you know, saving the world. But, yeah, he's definitely just Whatever. mopey. Whatever! We all have problems. Get over it. Welcome to Earth. Batman got a score of one, which was... Ouch, even with the hot body, he only gets a one? He only gets a one because of the body. Okay. <laughs> um, Batman's a really interesting character, so why we've kind of dumbed it down to being just mm. the hot guy with his shirt off, I don't know. They give us a little bit more of Superman's heart, which I think is why he was a cut above Batman in this one, because it didn't mm. rely solely on his six-pack, eight-pack, 12-pack, whatever, yeah. whatever abs he has. I think these were just more caricatures that they were giving me of Batman and of Superman than they were actually really fully fleshed out characters and people. Side, Side characters. characters! So for me, I had one zero, and it's still Perry White. I gave him, I don't <laughs> think he contributes anything to this film. I think he's there with Lois Lane's storyline and kind of moving things along and also identifying or piecing together, beginning to piece together Clark Kent. Yeah, and he still hasn't pieced it together, so the guy's an idiot. <laughs> Lois Lane even, to a degree, contributed both to our villain and to our heroes because with her investigative reporting and her interactions with Lex mm -hmm. Luthor, it made me begin to feel a little bit more animosity towards Lex Luthor that I otherwise probably would not have particularly cared about. Her connection with Superman was kind of one of the only things that really had me going in this one was their, their love story. There's a couple things she screwed up. She should have told Superman that Lex Luthor had kind of framed him I get that he's handsome, but stop kissing him for like 15 seconds just to get that vital piece of information out. Superman can hear her underwater through all this rubble, but when she's at the front of a line in a crowd, she can't just scream at him and say, Hey Superman, you're walking into a setup. You don't be able to hear her then. Knowing he is like the supersonic hero. Yeah, exactly. My four was Wonder Woman. Uh, I said, take her out of this movie and it becomes barely watchable. From her entrance on the scene in the small moments of being at various points in a crowd, we I was like, oh, wait, what is, wait, that's, oh my God, what is she doing here? What, what part does she play? So we're interested. And then when we get to the fight scene at the end and she comes on and, and starts doing battle, now I'm in. Now I'm into this movie. Any film that has Wonder Woman is going to get a high score in female empowerment. I think Lois Lane figuring everything out. And I think the fact that they've given us a Lois Lane who is ballsy, stands on her own two feet, can hold mm -hmm. her own next to Superman, even though she doesn't have all these amazing powers. She would have gotten a three for me if it had just been her in this film. She would have gotten a three for me if, if she had told Superman what the hell she found out. If she'd done that, then yeah, then she would have affected the outcome. But since she didn't, since she never got it out of her mouth, then she, you know, discovering it is one thing, all right? You gotta tell people about it. But we had Wonder Woman in this film. She's in the fi final showdown fight. She's really the only one who seems to be hurting the monster and not getting her own butt kick. But I also give it a four just because Wonder Woman was the only good part of this film. <laughs> and so for that, she was my hero in okay. this film. Okay, all right. That's, that's good. I like that. <laughs> the next section of grading categories that we have are pertaining to the villain, who in this one is Lex Luthor. He's mm -hmm. played by Jesse Eisenberg. End goal was basically to kill all metahumans because it makes him feel inferior. He compensates for his lack of physical strength and capabilities with his amazing intelligence. Except that in one of the very first scenes, he's sloppy and his bullet gets caught by Lois Lane. Arm him like you would arm normal terrorists. Yeah, with that's amazing. Illegal military weapons, not with your own product. <laughs> that's, that is very true. They never made, it didn't make any sense about why he's using his own bullets to, to to kill them. Like, what? Why? An argument can be said that he made the bullets out of his own metal so that people would know that it was him. Because, um, you know, like sometimes, not necessarily that he wants to get caught, but he wants to be lauded for his brilliance in this evil scheme. He messed with Superman's mom. And I love Diane Lane. 
Uh, and to take someone's mom and want to blowtorch them to death is a special level of sick. So I finally gave him a score of two, which is he's annoyed enough that I wouldn't mind seeing him dead. I think what it would have been better is if they would have given us a, uh, in the beginning, a smooth talking, like Lex Luthor, like he's this trust fund kid, but he's kind of got it all figured out. And then we start to see the little cracks and the little parts of like, okay, this guy's not, this, this guy's unhinged. But they gave us unhinged right away. Yeah. So he had nowhere else really to go. I can totally see myself as Lex Luthor. This is, <laughs> this is great. Our villains more relatable than our heroes. That's never good. Definitely met some pretentious trust fund babies, entitled douchebags. And just because you have a trust fund doesn't mean you're a douchebag or anything like that. I mean, it's, no. it's not your fault if you if your family had money or anything like that. I mean, that's not, you know, we don't hold, hold that against you. But when you treat others badly because, because you, you have money, feel entitled, yes. then, then it's bad. Yeah, then it's bad. So next up is the plot. It's predictable and kind of boring. That's not the score that Batman versus Superman should get. We've got no. two iconic super, superheroes fighting each other. We should not know what to expect. We should be on the edge of our seat. Two films now with Superman, where they easily could have incorporated this very iconic theme song and it somewhere, it yeah. and yet they don't. I mean, there are iconic theme songs. Star Wars, Indiana Jones, Superman. Now Marvel's got one. Mm -hmm. I mean, these are iconic, and your audience is waiting for them. Next up are visual effects. So there was uh, some bad CGI in this. There was a moment where, where Batman is saving, I, I think, a bunch of, of caged women who were sex traffickers oh, or something. Yeah. <laughs> and so he's up in the corner of this room hiding from the cops, and then the cop sees him, and he does this, like... <laughs> to just swat him. Moving on to action sequences. Wonder Woman comes Wonder Woman. in and saves the day and the end scene, um, I was a lot more invested in it. And the, you know, Batman versus Superman when they were actually fighting, that, that, scene, that scene was okay, that scene was, uh, was all right. So that's one or two scenes. I actually had the exact same score and for pretty much the exact same reasons. So I'll We're just... so in love. <laughs> I will just skip right along to our final category, which is heart. I'm the one who always needs like the tissue box and stuff. So I should yeah. be, really, really distraught at Superman's death. Oh yeah, for sure. You should um, be. I, I should be. I gave the heart a score of one. I said it had a sweet moment or two and I'm thinking of the bathtub scene. We definitely should have had a Batman film before Batman versus Superman. We should yeah. have had one with Ben Affleck. We should have had an established version of these characters with their own story so that we could get to a moment of really being totally invested in both of them and caring a lot if they're gonna fight each other. Let's move on to our final scores. I gave it a 45, but with a fist bump, it got a 46 for Batman v Superman, Dawn of Justice, which actually is the exact same score I gave Man of Steel. I actually gave it the exact same score my husband gave it. I gave it a 45. Uh, really didn't think this film was gonna pull out any fist bumps, but then we got Wonder Woman. Her mm -hmm. entrance was fabulous. All right, so that makes Batman versus Superman, Dawn of Justice, a score of 46. And uh, that's ranked right now below Man of Steel, which has a 55. If, if you have other ideas about the DCEU, feel free to share those as well. Yeah. I mean, we've kind of talked about how like things that we think might have, have helped it out a little bit or, or done better from a storytelling perspective, but um, we would love to know your ideas as well. I think it's fun when we get to discuss our, our favorite characters and the world that they're in and what may or may not work for a story. Our score for Batman v Superman Dawn Justice was a 46. But that is definitely not definitive.